welcome to the Peterson Automotive Museum. Today we're here with the Kia EV6, Kia's latest EV in their lineup. That's right, Kelly, and uh, Kia Motors has actually provided this car today. We were really excited to obviously look at this car and go a little bit in depth. Yeah, and uh, just so you guys know, this is the first EV that both of us have ever driven. That's, so. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be very, very interesting. I personally have my reservations about electric cars, but I'm kind of excited to see this car. What do you think, Kelly? Yeah, um, to be honest, a little bit of reservations myself, but uh, you'll see later on that uh, this might have changed our minds a little bit. If you guys saw our last video, we had the IS500, so big 5.0 liter V8, very opposite side of the spectrum here. Absolutely. Now, I, I really enjoyed that car. I, I know you like that car as well, right? You've yes. driven it quite a bit. Yeah, it was very fun. Yeah, it's going to be a very interesting compare and contrast. So, Kelly, here we are at the front of the EV6. First impressions, what do you think? Very aggressive looking compared to, you know, what we're typically used to with Kias. Yeah, I, I think it certainly is very unique especially in the market nowadays when it comes to other competitors. Um, I personally like it. I, I don't know, I, I, was, I was pretty surprised to see it in person because I've never seen one on the road. I mean, mm -hmm. it is a new car, but yeah, it's just really, really cool to see. It's got like the standard LED lights. I mean, we see it on everything, but it really does give all these new cars that pop on the front end. And we see the new Kia badge definitely fits this front end. What's cool is actually, yeah, that you mentioned the badge is like, I know Kia recently rebranded their, you know, their, their image. And certainly this car kind of fits that overall look of the future, I guess, you know? This one, I know it's very similar to the Hyundai Ionic, but this is really like on Hyundai's level. Yeah, yeah. So it's really exciting to see. I think the front, like what you said, is, is really aggressive. But in the, you know, in, in the, in the in the best possible sense of the word. Yeah, I yeah. like that Kia actually gave it a grill. Like, of course we know it's not very functional, it's an electric car, it doesn't yeah. need the grill. But I do like that they kept with it and like, it actually looks like a regular front end of a car. And not only that, I think the first thing that people will probably notice for sure on this car is the paint, yes. right? So this is actually a matte paint, which is super cool. Um, yeah, not many cars come with matte paint from the factory, so definitely pretty cool. Yeah, if Let's you want... not touch it too much, <laughs> get the <laughs> fingerprint magnet over here. But uh, yeah, it definitely looks great in person and in the sunlight. It even has cameras in the front, obviously, to kind of help you out with visibility-wise whenever you're parking. I would imagine you would not want to scrape this. I mean, yeah. it probably has good clearance, but <laughs> it's, it's... Yeah, and you guys will probably see a little bit later in the video once we get on the inside, that camera actually shows you like everything that's in front of you. So when you're pulling up into a parking spot or in your garage, make sure you don't hit the wall or yeah. anything. And this car is pretty wide too, so the cameras are a good, good addition. Good thing to have, <laughs> yeah. that's for sure. So uh, what do you think? Should we pop the hood and see what's hiding inside? Yeah, yeah. let's see what's there. All right, Kelly, so we're going to go ahead and open the hood. All right and see what's under there. Okay. What are we guessing? From my experience seeing other electric cars, frunk. my bet would be on a frunk. Okay. Okay, that's definitely not a frunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, that is fascinating. Uh, it looks just like a regular cars engine bay engine yeah bay, yeah it's <laughs> i mean it's wow even that got, is like, bizarre engine cover and everything and i guess you have access to a couple of things here i mean this looks like the washer fluid right here yeah okay okay maybe it's partly <laughs> a frunk partly i guess very mini frunk <laughs> mini frunk i i don't know what what, what could you fit in there uh. <laughs> I guess if you're like a student or something, you put some notebooks in there, or maybe keep an umbrella for, you know, the occasional rainy day. Right, Don't get right. many here in LA, but you know, just exactly. in case. Yeah, yeah. That is pretty bizarre. I mean, there are certain tabs here. I don't, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to pull it off, but certainly you could see a bunch of parts where, you know, we're assuming that's like probably the motor down there. Yeah. There's a battery right here, which is probably for like accessories, right? Lighting and all that. Yeah, yeah. probably. But very bizarre how they did it to where it is kind of like 
a normal engine bay. Bizarre, but it kind of goes with that whole thing like we said about the this front grille and just kind of overall just trying to make it look like you yeah, know, a like regular car. car. Yeah, this car is certainly full of surprises, so I guess we'll just keep on going. All right, Ivan, here we are at the side of the car. Tell me what you think of this profile. You know, the more I look at it, the more I actually really, really like it. I don't know if the viewers can say the same thing. I, again, it, I have my reservations with electric cars, but I think this car is slowly kind of reeling me into yeah. piquing my interest a little bit. I think the body lines is very, very sleek. It's a good looking car, I think. Yeah, I appreciate the minimalism that we're seeing here. I mean, you know, you still have your crossover-esque kind of body line here, but then you have all your flush door handles and your mirror turned in, but it does have a touch of aggressiveness if we look down kind of at like the wheels and the tires. Yeah. This thing is sporting 20 inch wheels. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Not used to seeing that like on, you know. Sports cars, yeah. high performance cars. So, I mean, yeah. touch of aggressiveness, which is nice. It goes with the overall like car as a whole. And then why don't we unlock it here and we can see what these handles do for us. That's cool. I think the fact that it's flush, again, it just gives off a really clean look. Yeah, and with as wide as this car is, definitely helpful that the mirror folds in for you <laughs> <laughs> when the door is locked. So we are here at the back of the car. I'm looking at it. Very still aggressive looking, but with that minimalistic vibe. I'd like to mention that it, it kind of borrows some design cues from the SMR and DBX. Um, you could see the swooping uh, rear hatch right here. And then the LED strip that runs across the back. What do you think of that? Wasn't a huge fan of them, but I am noticing that, you know, a lot more cars are having yeah. them. And I think it really does um, accent this back end very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it looks great overall. I think, again, it's it's kind of key, of, you know, modernizing and kind of rebranding and re-imaging their, their look into the automotive world, which is, I'm all, all for it. And, and uh, I think it just looks great. You can see the GT line right here. And actually what's cool is like the charging port is actually here in the back as well. So since we have it unlocked, it's touch sensitive. So if you just touch it like this, pops out. Um, and if you want to close it, there's a button right here. And actually is kind of elegant the way it opens and closes. I think I actually really like that. Another thing that I'd like to point out is actually under the spoiler right here, is that an LED light, right? Yeah, I think so. And what's cool is that it accentuates this line right here that runs across and, you know, meets the glass of the rear hatch. But yeah, overall, it looks great. So Kelly, we're inside the Kia right now. Um, I have to say it is extremely well put together, kind of like you're in a spaceship. Yeah, the first thing that kind of jumps out at me is it's spacious. Yeah. Like it's, it seems really big. Yeah. And I don't know if that has to do with this kind of weird gap right here, but this actually is not connected to... Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> it, th there's no kind of traditional center console where you kind of get split from the driver yeah right everything's pretty easy to find you know you have all your driver stuff over here and then this part of the steering wheel is all your media and everything mm -hmm. very interesting to me that there is no like center spoke here right on the steering wheel but it's actually pretty comfortable when you're yeah. driving it center stack i think is the highlight what i find interesting is that it does have paddle shifters is that really a paddle shifter or what is so that? So it kind of works like a paddle shifter. So your left one is, well, actually your left one is the plus here and your right one is the minus. Minus, yeah. <laughs> um, but it actually adjusts brake charging. So the higher you put it, the more brake recharge you'll get. So when you let off the gas, uh, it will start slowing down the car faster wow. the higher that number is. So. Uh, it kind of works like a paddle shifter if you yeah. think about it, but uh, you can't really use it at high speed. Another thing that is pretty cool, again, I just wasn't expecting, is that this apartment right here is actually an additional screen, right? Yeah, it's so, all touch. Um, what's cool is apparently you can switch it between your, um, your, your air conditioning and obviously climate control, and then you can go to media as well. So you can do your map navigation and then you know, all of the tracks when you're listening to music or something like that. Yeah. Again, that's very, it kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier. It's very minimalistic. The thing that jumps out at me also, aside from the center stack, huge screens in front yeah. of you. Yeah. 
Yeah. And you would think it would be like pretty distracting and stuff when you're driving, but it's actually not that bad. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have all your media and everything over here. Like if you plug in your phone, CarPlay shows up there. Yeah. And then you just have, you know, all of your driving information here. I would like to note too, when you change your driving mode, all of this ambient lighting changes color depending mm. on which mode you're in. So of course sport, you know, you're gonna have yeah. red and whatnot. Um, but I think those little touches like that. Yeah, yeah. I was nice. gonna say the ambient lighting is a really nice touch. Um, again, just keeping with the times, having all those creature comforts, and certainly this car has them. Yeah. So very impressive. Why don't we take it for a spin? Yeah, let's go. All right, Kelly. So we're inside the Kia EV6. We're actually driving around LA right now. So. What do you think so far? It's comfortable. Uh, it's really easy to drive. Yeah. Like, you know, the instant torque, you go when you tell it to go. So it's just really easy to drive. And it's really nice. Like right now we're going through a little bit of like Beverly Hills area, lots of stoplights and it's just super comfortable. Coming from a gasoline car, like, you know, I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect at yeah. all. Um, but one thing I actually really notice is a lot of the noise when I'm driving is just road noise, yeah. not necessarily motor noise. Yeah. So like even inside the car with the electric vehicle, no motor noise. Yeah. It actually still kind of sounds similar. Yeah. Like unless you have like an exhaust or something on your car, then we're talking about a different story. But like if you just have a stock like gasoline engine, you really don't hear much with all the insulation now. Yeah. So it actually doesn't sound too different yeah it is kind of bizarre when you like turn it on and you don't hear anything it's like yeah. you don't even know when it's on or not but I, I do agree it is very impressive it's super comfortable inside it's just taking all of the all of the ridiculous bumps here in LA as you'd expect it's not necessarily the best of roads but no it, it feels really comfortable inside so Kelly as with every car nowadays it has to have different mode well this one has eco normal and then sport um majority of the time obviously this is going to be an eco but have you tried using it in sport at all sport mode is my favorite <laughs> um <laughs> unless you're trying to extend extend your range then i wouldn't recommend using it although yeah. the range different isn't as bad as you would expect going from eco to sport mm -hmm. from what i found but yeah sport mode is definitely the most fun if you want to uh, take advantage of that instant torque from the electric motor right and i noticed too like whenever you go on sport mode it like it immediately tells you that you lose like 10 to 15 miles of range already when you when you change the drive mode uh, on the steering wheel you'll automatically see the screen change in front of you and it'll show you the uh, updated range based on whatever mode you're in right right to add on to that like whenever you adjust something increase the you know your AC or use some of the features um, you know that drains a lot of battery it reflects that onto the screen as well which is pretty helpful when of course when you're trying to be aware of what you're you know of the amount of energy that you're using so actually another cool feature on this car is the eye pedal right yeah so when you're driving you'll notice that the car has paddle shifters almost like you know a regular uh, vehicle would but they actually don't shift any gears given that this electric right. car doesn't have a transmission <laughs> but what it does is it increases or decreases how hard the car does the regenerative braking so the higher the level the more of regenerative braking you'll get so essentially the less of that idle forward feeling you'll get mm -hmm. so when you let off of the gas pedal it'll automatically just start slowing down right and when you hit so there's four levels one through eye pedal so you have one two three and then the eye pedal mm -hmm. and when you get to the eye pedal you essentially don't even have to use your brake pedal right you can let completely off the throttle and then you'll come to a complete stop <laughs> that's really really cool um and with that said, that actually, in theory, that gives back a little bit of energy back to the, the battery, right? Yeah. So the more regenerative braking you have, the more it will give back to the battery. So mm -hmm. like we we're talking about, if you're worried about your range or anything like that, the higher you have on those levels of braking, the better. Mm -hmm. And did you notice any difference at all? Or 
it's just kind of one of those things that it's kind of cool to have but uh i didn't see a whole lot of difference in the range so like when i was looking at the numbers and using the ipedal it didn't do much mm -hmm. um but you can really tell a difference you kind of almost has to reteach yourself how to use the the throttle pedal right um because it breaks so hard well kelly now that you've been driving why don't i go ahead and actually try it out myself what do you think let's go so now that i'm behind the wheel i will say it's it's like after living with this for a couple of days it's actually really i think i'm kind of opening up to the idea of really embracing this technology since of course we're both pretty big into internal combustion engines we like cars that make noises and yes. all that good <laughs> stuff it's i think it i don't know i think it, this is just a great product from kia to where i think they really did an incredible job in terms of just making this car a great overall introduction to people out there who might be in the market for for an electric vehicle um yeah i think it's really really cool uh, one thing that I noticed too is whenever I was, you know, whenever I took this car out is that everybody would stare at it. It's, I think the way it looks, it's definitely one of those things where um, a lot of people can appreciate it. Or if anything, really people are kind of wondering, what the heck is that? That doesn't look like your typical electric car. Yeah, and I think for people like us, we live in LA, lots of traffic, you know, it's just, really nice to have a car that's easy to drive in yes. stop and go traffic. <laughs> yeah, something that's comfortable, quiet. Um, again, I never really had any issue with the range. I think it has a good enough amount of range. And mm -hmm. from my experience when I was charging it, I got it to about 50% and I used Electrify America. And from 50 to 80%, it was about 10 minutes. Okay. So it was pretty quick. It, was, yeah. it, was, it wasn't too bad. And then from that, it kind of slows down after 80%, mm -hmm. um, which I guess makes sense because I guess the battery gets hot when you're really charging it that fast. So overall from 50 to 100, it was about 37 minutes. Okay. So and I did, um, that was probably one of the faster chargers, I'm guessing. Right. Um, I know I did one of the slower charging ones and I think I got about 8% or so within I don't know, half an hour, 45 mm -hmm. minutes. So significantly longer, but right. um, the price was definitely a lot yeah. lower than gas prices. So I can't complain there. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, if you're going to somewhere like I was at a mall, I just sat the car there and plugged it in. Right. It really doesn't hurt you that much if you're just gonna you know, be walking around. Right, and exactly. Go back to your car and you got a little bit of charge there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think in total, like, for the amount I spent on the charge I did, it was like $18 um, and I got around 170 miles back, which again, isn't too bad. Um, I think it's just one of those things that as time goes on, it's just gonna keep getting better and better. Yeah. All right, so Kelly, I'm actually gonna turn the drive mode into sport. You Let's ready? Go. I am ready. Okay, we're just <laughs> waiting for the light to turn. Okay. <laughs> oh goodness, okay. <laughs> and we're already breaking the law. <laughs> that was crazy, okay. Um, isn't it zero to 60 on this car is like 4.6 seconds? Yeah, like, I think that uh, is it beats fast. a Cayman, so. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. Um, I felt like my insides moved. Quite a bit. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Kelly, here we are, ending the day, uh, spending a little time with the EV6. What do you think so far? It's been quite an experience, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think like we mentioned before, first electric vehicle, so I don't have a lot to compare it to, but I am overall very impressed. You know, I'm all for your gas guzzling V8s, you know, that raw power, but it will go. <laughs> and it was really <laughs> impressive. So some of the key highlights for me was interior, exterior design, amazing. Mm -hmm. Can't even tell it's a Kia. It looks mm -hmm. nothing like what they've done in the past. Mm -hmm. And then we were a little, you know, spoiled. We had the dual motor option. So, I mean, it 
it went whenever yeah, we needed it to. Yeah. <laughs> Just overall, very, very impressed. Agree, I have to agree. I'm all for high-powered performance cars, but I think having both electric and gas, you know, that's kind of the best of both worlds. Um, yeah, I think this is a great introduction for me anyways to, to electric cars. Like you said, it, it's certainly away from what Kia would usually make cars, you know, and you know, that's something that we could certainly praise them for. Well guys, thank you so much for spending some time with us and watching this video. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and a huge shout out to Kia for lending us this car for a few days. We'll see you guys next time.